Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we have already talked about the problems and why we really needed containers. So uh, let's get started with containers then. Before we get uh, into the nitty gritty details of what makes containers possible, let's introduce the terms uh, user space and kernel space. Now kernel space is where your kernel executes all its operations. And in the user space, we execute our own applications. This is where the non-privileged actions actually happen. So in the VM model, we have our operating system, which is sitting on top of the physical server. Then we have hypervisor. And what we get is uh, multiple VMs being created. And for each VM, we will need an operating system. It could either be Linux or Windows or something else maybe. Now. Uh, when we talk about containers, what happens is we, whenever we're talking about containers, actually we are talking about operating system virtualization. So I'll rename this to OS virtualization and some people also refer to it as uh, container virtualization. So we still have our physical server, we have our operating system and this operating system will actually consist of like uh, its own process tree, it will have its own uh, file system it will have its own network and what we generally do is we create virtual process trees virtual file system virtual network and how we do it is by creating okay i can just copy this is by creating multiple isolated user space So this is one user space, which looks like this, and then we will have multiple user space. Just like we have multiple VMs, we simply have multiple user spaces. I'm still learning the tools, so just bear with me. And so on, so on and so forth. Which basically means is now you have an isolated boundary where you can run your application so you generally don't need anything else no you don't need operating system all you need is a user space where you can simply spin up your application and that's it and now when we are referring to like um, now when you're saying application you can run applications you can actually have multiple instances of the same application in each and individual uh, user space so meaning let's say you have app instance one app v1 and you also then deploy app v2 which actually use a library that is in common and we were somehow using v1.1 for both the applications we're using. but now for v2 you generally need a separate library version which is 1.12 and this is not possible if you're deploying it in a single user space because it's nearly impossible to or at least not ideally possible to have multiple versions of a single library on an operating system but now that we have just bordered these applications into individual user spaces this is now possible so we can have these boundaries we will talk about in more details how this is happening but this is exactly what it is so if in the in the layman's term uh, this border right here is your so you can say one user space equals one container this is exactly what a container is in let's let me repeat one container is nothing but an isolated and independent user space which has got its own um, virtual process trees virtual file system virtual network and all that shebang so we take the original resources from the operating system create virtual resources isolate them in a box which we call as user space and in the modern terminology that's known as container so even if you look into kernel code in Linux, there's nothing like container. All this is made possible with things like uh, namespaces, 
and primarily namespaces and then we on top of that to control how things work better we use uh, c groups or also known as control groups now with modern containers we also use capabilities put it all together with ufs which is unified file system and you have your modern containers which is made easy by docker now like you, you can see that these technologies have been in linux kernel for ages uh, it's just that uh, companies like google microsoft they were the only ones who were playing around with them and people like us we were just sitting behind and enjoying the vm model basically so yeah let's let's talk about the namespaces and all those all this fancy stuff right here let's start with namespaces first so when we talk about namespaces there are a few namespaces that are most commonly used or most commonly known and i have them listed out here and don't worry about these details they will be i'll add them they will be available in the description basically so uh, what is a namespace a namespace a, a namespace is not one thing there are multiple namespaces that do have multiple different responsibilities and when we put together these namespaces what we get is an independent isolated uh, instance of a user space now one isolated user space is uh, equal to one container let's let that's a that's a basic idea now there are different namespaces the process id which is the pid namespace uh, it is responsible for generating process ids and uh, uh, if we go to our uh, terminal so let's start with uh, by creating a container so don't worry about the command that i'm executing at this point uh, but uh, just focus on what i'm trying to achieve so i'm creating a container named uh, named busy and i'm just executing the top command on top of it excuse me so that's done and uh, let's create another container and uh, let's name it uh, sleepy okay it's already there and here we go so we have just created two isolated user spaces what will happen is if we look into uh, so we have our host um, so this is our host and then what this is and this is one user space it has its own process tree and file system so let me expand this it has got its uh, its own shebang like it has got its own pid network and uh, root of s right now what i'm saying is we have just created multiple instances of uh, we have created more user spaces basically these are two children of the of the parent uh, instance so basically what i'm trying to say is this process id here in, on the host we will have uh, pid1 which would be in it or system d which depending on which operating system you are using or and uh, they, it will have multiple processes the this user space and this user space will also have this same components they will have their own root fs their own process tree they will have their own network stack and everything and this instance will also have a pid which will have one so pid one basically represents the root uh, or i would say the primary process that is running and this one will also have a pid one now it will be interesting to see what is running as pid one on on your host you generally have pid1 to be as init or system d that's generally what it is oops yep 
So let's expand this a bit. Here we go. So let's take a look at the host process processes that are executing, and then we will take a look at what is running as PID one in here and PID one and Sleepy. So if I do ps hyphen ef grab in it so this is running as my root process id is one and this is running as i'm running in it i'm on, on arch linux um, and yeah that's basically it and if we do um, ps hyphen ef but we remove everything like this you will see something very interesting so we created two containers each of them were uh, so this one was uh, running uh, this was running the command uh, top and this one in right here was executing sleep uh, 1d and interesting thing is the host operating system also has two processes one is running sleep 1d and the other one is running top so you notice these process ids now let's do one thing let's uh, let's take a look inside what's inside sleepy what i'm trying to do is execute a ps hyphen ef command and list out the processes that are running there now if you see of for pid uh, pid1 we have sleep 1d running so here this is what's being executed and you will see that for busy the pid1 will be allocated to top Here we go and for this one was executed at ps ef uh, because uh, each command that you execute is, is run as a process and uh, this is the process id that is allocated to ps ef which we just executed from here so you see whatever is happening inside the inside the child user space is or in, inside a container is visible to the host though it is not referring to them with the same process ids but yes it is visible to the operating system or the host but whatever is uh, is happening inside the host is not directly visible inside the container and that's how you achieve the isolation thanks to namespaces now for uh, the network i believe they also get eth eth0 and uh, each container will have its own ether it's zero and it will have its own network in interface configured next configured and it will have its own file system as well so if we look into we execute the same command instead we'll use this this and this is the file system that is available inside our busy box so this is certainly going to be different and in, in the internal file system which will like if we dive deeper it will ha may have uh, different files as compared to what your host has but uh, if we do uh, I think the command is host name okay I'm not sure how do we get the host name uh, in Alpine or busybox basically so can we exact I think probably the the name of the container should Dr. PS. Uh, okay, so we basically named uh, these containers so the uh, host name will be sleepy and busy. Yep, that's it. Cool. So uh, at least we get an idea. Okay, uh, the process tree on the host can have processes uh, that are running inside your containers. It will actually have for sure. And the process IDs for these processes running inside the containers will be mapped to a process ID, which is absolutely different on the host. Now, the the root fs will also be different in the child namespaces and that in the uh, host because it will have its own file stack same goes with the network as well now there is a high possibility that uh, if we are running something uh, like inside busy if we were to run an application that is highly uh, resource hungry then it there is a high possibility that sleepy will never you know get those resources which it requires to run its own operations and what we name this is uh, this is generally known as uh, starvation or basically resource starvation 
uh, and this situation is really bad because you, there's no uh, control over how much resources one container or one process can actually consume and we want to limit that because it, it we don't really want to run into resource starvation it's, it's a really bad situation to be in so how do we control that uh, we have isolated the user spaces but we want to limit the what a particular user space can consume from the host and this is made possible by c groups so let's talk about c groups next so c groups is uh, c groups are used to oh okay okay let's continue i will talk about these namespaces once again so c groups make it possible to group the resources and apply limits so we will have one user space and we will have a c group that will be defined for this particular user space oops and which will basically define how much of uh, cpu it can use how much of uh, memory uh, storage it can have and let's say this particular uh, container goes on consuming the memory uh, it goes on computing uh, consuming the compute let's say it raises a fifth above 50 percent of the compute then we can define a limit inside the c group that if it reaches above 50 let's let's kill it and uh, maybe or let's kill it or maybe restart the container so that uh, if there was any process that was stuck in certain deadlock or whatever it could be just rebooted and uh, re we could run the application and it should go smooth with that so we also have a c group defined for this container and that's how you manage the capabilities for each container so one container equals one c group now i also uh, i forgot to talk about different uh, namespaces so let's cover them once so pid uh, pid namespace gives you process ids for each container for each user space uh, net is responsible for defining the network stack for each uh, container mnt gives you the root file system for uh, ipc provides the inter process communication probably uh, like one of them is uh, access to the shared memory so that is done by taken care by ipc we get the host name for a container using uts file system or uh, uts uh, namespace uh, user is is very interesting and is recently added to docker not recent as in now recent it was added to specifically for docker use cases where a root user inside a container could be mapped to a non root or non privileged user on your host and that is made possible using the user um, uh, namespace now we have already talked about c groups let's talk about unified file system we will basically only touch about unified file system or ufs without which i think modern containers are kind of very difficult to work with still and uh, we will talk about unified file system when we talk about docker images and how they are built so unified file system is like you have read only layers or uh, files file stacks file system or block de uh, block devices that are layered on top of each other but these are read only you have your minimal um, operating system that we just saw in our busy box so busy box is your minimal layer of um, read only layer of your operating system which is layer one on top of that you will have a, 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 another layer which will be read only if required otherwise docker creates a write and read layer to which a user can write its uh, its changes and read from for those changes so again unified file system is layering uh, file systems on top of each other presenting a unified uh, block basically giving you an impression that okay you are working on a single uh, file layer of the system and then on top of that docker adds a read write layer through which a user can write and read from and that's how unified file system basically works there are, there are absolutely more details to unified file system it's a very good topic to cover in detail and i would really encourage if you are if you have time go ahead and learn about this it's really nice now let's talk about capabilities once again not once again for once so capabilities are the fine grain control over what a process or a user can do inside a container you do not want your containers or your user inside a container to you know reboot the system or kill another pro other processes so how do you manage that 
So this is taken care by defining capabilities. Now what Docker does, it has a whitelist of capabilities that are by default added or provided to a container. And there are capabilities that are not uh, by default added. So there's a whitelist. How you can, so basically what you can do, you can remove the existing capabilities and you can add the capabilities that are by default not enabled and that is possible. Uh, and I'll just show you the list on the capabilities thing as well. If you set a uh, privileged equals to true when you are basically the flag hyphen hyphen privileged uh, when you are running a container what you are basically saying is this user can, can have extra privileges uh, can have more control connect with the kernel and uh, it will have access to a different devices that are available that is by default not available to any container that is running as non-privileged so for example if you want to run docker inside docker uh, you will need to mount the docker socket and you cannot do it until and unless you provide hyphen privilege flag so things like this can only be done if you are using hyphen privilege because it uh, it also works in capacity or in collaboration with capabilities so if you go to docker documentation docs.docker.com and if you search for docker capabilities you should see a docker run reference you go inside scroll a bit you should see runtime privilege and linux capabilities let me zoom in a bit so the link i clicked was Okay, um, so on, from the, on the top, you should see runtime privilege and Linux capabilities. Drop in here, which are, and if you scroll down here, we talk about privileged, and also I believe there is an there's a link to an article which is pretty good. So basically, these capabilities that are listed right here are allowed by default, which means this is the whitelist that Docker maintains. And then we have capabilities that are not granted by default and may be added. So how do you add and remove those capabilities? This is how you do it. So you can, uh, while doing a Docker run, you specify capability add and you do an all to add everything and capability drop to drop a particular capability. So yeah, this, this is what I wanted to talk about in this particular video so we have touched upon namespaces c groups unified file system and capabilities these are the building blocks for today's modern containers i hope this gives you a good idea uh, of course there are there are a lot of resources that are available which can take you even further even if you want to dig deeper i will link to a few of them if if i remember or if i can collect them one is definitely a video from one of the docker person who has been on the docker team from from the very beginning even before it was docker it was dot cloud i think I, jerome is the name if i'm not spelling it incorrectly uh so yeah i look forward to seeing you guys in the next one where we talk about the docker architecture and uh, basically the docker engine what what you get when you install docker and let's see how it works on windows and linux so i'll see you in the next one thank you bye bye